Hey you folks, Quill18 here and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Saturday live stream. Happy to have you all here once again. We're going to be playing some Kerbal Space Program today. Very exciting! Ah! It is patch 1.2. I'm actually on the preview build now, which is the same one that you guys can technically opt in on on Steam. So everything should be 100% identical. We are going to be playing modless because the mods haven't been updated for 1.2. Technically I have a mod in here for Planet Shine to just... Uh, tweak the lighting a little bit for video making purposes, but that's it. Nothing that'll change gameplay, and certainly nothing that gives us any help with the math and the calculation and the delta Bs and the thrust to weights and whatnot, which is gonna be a little freaky. I mean, we've done some pretty straightforward stuff so far. Um, you know, going to orbit, going to the moon and min miss without any mods, uh, that's fine. I mean, if you've done it, you know, if you've played enough Kerbal Space Program, you get sort of an, a sense about probably how much Delta V you're gonna have out of certain rocket configurations. Uh, but this is a whole other kettle of fish. We are gonna go a long way today. We're gonna go either to Duna or Eve. Um, mostly I'll be checking what our current um, celestial alignment is to figure out which one's gonna be the easiest to launch to at this point, and we'll see how it goes. Now, first things first, episode seven and eight of the Let's Play. This is a continuation of that. Episode seven and eight of the Let's Play, well, as, read, as you read in the description, uh, Windows decided to change which microphone it was going to use for the recording, so it recorded off the webcam audio, which is why the audio is a piece of shit in those two videos. And so then I was like, oh my god, so then I re-recorded both those episodes. Yeah, you don't even know. I re-recorded both those episodes with the correct mic. Um, and the recording files were corrupted. Like, literally could not be played, could not be opened. So I've recorded parts 7 and 8 twice each. And after the second one, the computer decided to eat them. I was like, fuck it! The ones with shitty audio are going online. Salt powered. Right here. Salty. Yeah. So I was a little bit, I was a little bit upset. I was a little bit upset. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so that's why episode 7 and 8 went online with crappy audio. I had re-recorded them, and then the computer ate them anyway. So, yeah! So that was great! And then, to top it all off, after I finally put 7 and 8 online and told YouTube to schedule them and record and to, to publish them, apparently the publishing directions for episode 8 didn't take. It was supposed to go up yesterday, and apparently it didn't. So then I, I forced it to go manually today. So apparently Kerbal Space Program is just cursed. It's just cursed! Which is going to bode well for this today. Anyway, the reason, um, that's also the reason why I don't have exactly the same science here as at the end of episode 8. Because I did an, a whole other uh, Minmus landing with, um, with Valentina. A whole other one, a whole other set of biomes, a whole other set of science. Brought it home, so I don't have exactly the same science. Also, um, just to try to power through a few of these missions, there were a couple of the, like, tweak a satellite orbit or send some science from, from space. So I just, I did a few of those to see if we could cycle to a, uh, a more interesting set of missions. And we haven't yet. We've got more missions to plant a flag on moon. We haven't actually landed a person on the moon yet. Um, and there's a lot of science to be had for that. So that might be okay. We still have to dock two ships in orbit, which we could do with a rescue mission if it comes up. Um, some satellite missions and whatnot. Today, I would really like to go either to the moon, uh, to, to Duna or... Eve, probably as a probe, because we're not sending anyone home. Also, we don't really have the biggest engine, so I got some science to spend over here, right? We got a thousand units of science, but that goes really fast, and the problem is, I'm not entirely sure that we're going to have the required rocketry to send something as heavy as a manned mission to Duna, and certainly not one that's ever going to come home. No, no, no. So I was thinking of sending a probe there, um, but... Then it brings up the interesting point of now we need a connection. We need a, a um, like a network connection, right? With the communications dishes to reach all the way back home. Um, and of course, you know, Duna or wherever we land has to be facing the right way around for us to actually have line of sight to a Kerbin. So, so yeah, so I don't know what we're going to do about that. Um, we could you know, consider building up a little bit of a satellite network first to give us a little bit of range. We could still send a manned capsule and see how it goes. Again, they're never coming home, um, but that's okay. Although, the thing is, regardless of, of whether it's manned or unmanned, we need to make sure we've got a satellite or a network connection back to the Kerbal Space Center so that we can transmit the science home, right? So, yeah. I don't know. 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 Anyway, thank you very much, everyone who's resubbing here. Uh, we've got some Codexist. Cheers. Thank you very much. 
Uh, if I go back a little more, we got Vinehart over there at three months. Thank you, Gordo. Scythia, the red one. We've got Shawan just coming in now. We got T Dude, Nyla Field, and Silverfish in the chat. Stop scrolling. So I'm terribly sorry if you resub before then. I did miss you. Um, further. Hey, thank you very much. Year and a half. Cheers. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, network time. So, yeah, we have to figure out exactly what we're going to do here. Um, hmm. Certainly, one way or the other, we need advanced electronics. Because we need more solar power. You know, these are the extendable solar panels. They're kind of key. But then after that, yeah, it's a big question. Advanced fuel systems... Those are the big, the big Rockomax tanks. Not that we really have the engines that use those yet, although we could unlock the Poodle and the Skipper, and we could actually end up with quite a bit larger thing. We could even unlock the uh, the mainsail if we wanted. Um, we've also got the precision propulsion, very tiny little engines, very good for those probes. Advanced construction, the big nose cone. If we do go for the 2.5 meter parts, as well as some of these uh, stacked, like triple stack um, setups. I don't think this is the big airstream. Um, um, what do you call them? The fairing. The big fairing. So I'm not sure what else we're going to unlock here. Hey, Bass, thank you very much for the resub. We've got Serum... Serumian before that. Thank you very much. And a Rexit! Cheers, Mr. Prime Minister. And Mimu and Grey Reaper. Thank you all for the resubs. I'd agree with building a sat network just to make sure you don't run into them uh, during space flights. Yeah. <laughs> so... So far, all the satellites we've put up to complete uh, missions have been using the base antenna, which do not do relaying. We instead need to use, so not the communitron, instead we need to use, where the heck is it? The high gain antenna here. You can see at the top of this, it says antenna type relay. So that's one thing. It's got an, an antenna rating of 5 million, whatever the hell that means. We actually don't, we still don't really know what those numbers represent. Um, but I'm going to assume something like, number of kilometers that it can reach, even though it doesn't seem to be exactly that either. Over here as well, there's another antenna. Oh, this one over here. This is a direct antenna with a 10G rating. I don't know. I get 4G on my phone. 10G's got to be a lot better than that. Um, it's not a relay one, though. But I suspect if we put this on our probe, we'd be able to see Kerbal, Kerbin, assuming we've got line of sight. Um, there's another relay satellite somewhere up here. Yeah, right over here, uh, the RA1 relay antenna, which is an antenna rating of 1G, whatever that means. And then underneath it says combinable, VSL1, DSN, VSL2, DSN, VSL3, DSN. With the L3, DSN, it hits 10G. Like, I don't know what that means. Strength doesn't mean kilometers, distance is dependent on receiving and transmitting antenna. So it's a, it's a pair of things. And that's it, like, that, that's what I figured. It's, it's supposed to be sort of a bit more woo, wibbly wobbly. But presumably to go to the moon, or to go to Duna or something like that, we probably need one of the two super high-powered antennas here. Um, this one or... I lost it again. Right, the relay antenna or this one. So may, I'm assuming with this communitron, if we have line of sight of KSC, it'll probably reach it. But we'll only have line of sight of the KSC half the time. But we can still land. If we do do a manned mission to EVE or Duna... Assuming this communitron reaches KSC so that we can transmit science, we can do a manned mission, then it doesn't matter what side of the planet we're on when we do the landing, we'll still have full control because it'll be controlled by a person. Um, the problem is if we... Dave, get a tip in! Um, <laughs> the problem is if we send an unmanned one, then um, if we are on the wrong side of the planet, then we may not have, we won't have control over things. That being said, we could still use a series of parachutes and things like that, uh, pre-deploy them, but set, you know, altitude limits and different things like that, so that would still work out. So, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Bum, 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 bum. It's the square root of the addition of the sending and receiving. Yeah. GM is gigameter. Because, no, the thing is, the 500k, if that was 500,000 meters, or 500 kilometers, it still reaches the moon, so it's not just distance. Some people are still saying distance. It's clearly not that. Um, L1, L2, L3 is the tracking station level. Oh. It could be. It could be. Anywho, let's take a look at the uh, stream tip alerts. We've got something from Grey Reaper. Thank you very much, Grey. Thank you all for the amazing content keeping me entertained while at work. Well, thank you very much for watching there, Gray. And Kitty Cat, hey! 
what's this KSP? Rockets go good with whiskey. Uh, but then my grandma always says whiskey goes good with everything. That is true. That is true. At least that's my opinion. The V1, V2, V3 is combined with the wide antenna or a narrow antenna or very narrow antenna. Anyway, let's, let's build some rockets. Let's build some rockets. So let's see what we can unlock. If, you know, maybe we can get Let's see if we can get something with 2.5 meters. Maybe we can get someone over to Duna. I mean, we can't get nuclear propulsion, I suspect. We don't need that. What we could do first is we could set up a relay antenna. Um, we could try to put a relay antenna in orbit around Duna to start off with. That would be kind of interesting. It would take a while, but it could work. We could do a paired mission. You know what? Let's try to do a manned mission to Duna. What the hell? What could possibly go wrong? So we need the 2.5 meter stuff uh, for sure. We got the solar panels, which is good. I'm going to get the communitron and hope that that can reach. That's most of our um, stuff right over here. Uh, I don't think we need the big giant batteries. We're going to be okay there. Uh, they've got the other communitron here, but I think we can skip that for now. Miniaturization. No. Um, we could go with the big fat command modules over here. Crew capacity. We could send multiple people there, but I don't think that's what we're looking to do. Um, Mark II lander can, crew capacity of two. I mean, it'd be great if we could send the whole science lab there, which we have done before. I don't remember. Have we unlocked the, the big science lab? Where is it? Oh, right here. That's probably a little bit heavier than we can actually manage. You know what would be a good way to get science, though? Is getting the big science lab in orbit of the moon, and then do multiple moon landings after that. Collecting science from the ground, bringing it up, docking an orbit of the moon here, so that the science can be processed forever. That would actually be a really good way to get a shite ton of science. But I think we'll save that as a plan B. If this doesn't work out and we, it turns out we need more science, we will save this as a plan B. I think what I'm going to do is save the money right now, or save the science, um, just in case we need to unlock the main sail engine, or maybe we need to unlo unlock some new nose cones or, or something of that nature. Actually, we almost certainly need the big nose cones. We might be able to make do without the main sail, but I think we need the big fat nose cones. Don't think we need any of those, although we might want, I mean, at that point, if I'm going to need the big fat nose cone, it's only 90, I'll, I'll probably go ahead and get the big fat inline um, stabilizer. Oh, the Mark 1 landing can, actually, we can just land with that. It's a lot lighter. Yeah, there we go. That'll be good. So what we have been using so far is the Mark 1 command pod, which is a one person command pod uh, with control ability, does have a built in antenna, um, and it's got reaction wheels built in. The Mark I lander can is lighter, okay? This is 0.84 tons, this is 0.66 tons, so it's a fair bit lighter. This actually makes a big, big, big difference. Um, it still has reaction wheels, although they are weaker, but other than that, it is still so totally self-contained. The difference is that this can tolerate a harder landing, 14 meters per second. This is only 8 meters per second. Also, this is not quite as aerodynamically shielded, but... I think the fact that it is lighter is going to be better. If we're going to send a person to Duna or, or Eve, we got to try to cut as much weight as possible. As much weight as possible. And the big question, if we're cutting as much weight as possible, is do we send a science junior? And more importantly also, we won't be able to repeat the experiments unless we just send a scientist, which actually ain't a bad idea. What if we just send a scientist to live there, which means we don't get to use SAS or anything like that unless we also include a probe core. Now, that adds some weight, certainly. Quite a bit, actually. But it's not, you know, unusable. Throw this on here, that way we get some amount of SAS, because otherwise we don't even get stability assistance, right? But if we stick a scientist in there, that means we can go and indeed reuse these experiments, um, which I might put above. You know, something like that. And then put the big communitron on top. What does this look like when deployed? Whoa, flips out instantly. Well, here in the uh, construction thing, probably. Thump, 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 thump. 
the pump, the pump. I suppose we could put it on the side as well. What do you think? Scientist plus plurob, a lot of people like that. Real kerbals don't need SAS. I don't know about that. But yeah, so now we can actually reuse experiments, which can be important if what we want to do is um, get science from in orbit of Kerbal, which is the sun, high min, uh, Duna space, or Eve space, whatever. We'll say Duna for now, but we'll figure it out when we look at what this, the area is. Um, so high Duna space, near Duna space, um, reset all those, and then probably get like high Duna atmospheric, and then not get the low because we won't be able to walk out and reset them or anything like that until we actually land. Something like this. Um, I guess we'll want the seismic accelerometer. We're going to want the whole science package, right? Um, the two hot thermometer, all of which will need some resetting, um, and the press mat barometer over here. Then what I'll do is I'll get a couple of ladders um, because unlike being on um, on the moon or Minmus, I don't think we can rocket. I don't think we can uh, booster our way up. Here, but this at this point we're getting to be. This is definitely a lot heavier. This is a pretty heavy payload that we're talking about sending, which might be fine, but oof, oof. Obviously, we're gonna need landing. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure about all this. Um, let's say quad like that. And mostly we're looking at coming down with parachutes, which we will mount somewhere. Which is a good question. Where do we mount the parachutes to be happy? I guess on the side of the materials bay. And then we also use... Oh, actually, I don't know. Oh, we don't have the inflatable heat shield. Oh, shit. Without the big giant inflatable heat shield, this all of a sudden becomes a much, much, much more difficult re-entry. I mean, I can put a regular heat shield down there. Or even, like, the big one, even though it looks a little bit odd. But technically, that works. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I don't think we've got the parts. I really want to try to rush the Duna landing, but I feel like it might be very, very difficult for us to send a person there. This is starting to get very heavy, and without Delta V calculations, there's a good chance we just won't have the oomph required to get there. But, I mean, basically, this is what we'd be looking at. Plus a bunch of parachutes. So... Uh, probably the normal heat shield would be su uh, uh, sufficient, but I'm not sure. Four regular parachutes plus a bunch of drogues. I mean, the atmosphere on Duna is very thin. Although, if we were changing this up and actually going to um, EVE, then that would actually be a little bit easier because the atmosphere on EVE is so thick. I guarantee our parachutes would be sufficient to, to slow us down and stop us. Going to EVE has a whole other suit of problems, but... It does mean the parachutes would work, that's for sure. The only thing I don't know is whether this tiny heat shield, if that actually correctly protects everything on the bottom. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't feel like it should, although it might, depends on how the mechanics work. I mean, this definitely will. You know, retract those, they poke out a little bit, which is a bit awkward, but not necessarily a problem. But I can also just bring it up here, so now they don't poke out. Come in like this. Normal heat shield 1.25 works with the lander can and landing, and that's what I thought. What about the landing gear, though? I wonder about them sticking out. The larger one also means it's going to slow us down more on re-entry, which is a good thing. Are we planning on going back to Kerbin? No! Whoever's going is going to live in this thing forever. It's going to be great. Um, yeah, it's a one-way trip. They're going to have to bring a lot of comic books with them. But at least they'll have an antenna connection, so they should be able to get Netflix. Well, about half the time. Yeah, solar panels. So I don't know. I don't know how we feel about this. Mm, I think what I'm going to do is get the single deployment solar panels
and I just won't deploy these until we're actually landed. We'll have a different set of solar panels for the trip. So there, and as a, sort of a bit of an emergency method, I'm going to have one static solar panel over there. That's really not very good. There you go, a pair of static solar panels there, just in case something funky happens. So these are not going to get used in flight because they, they can't be re-retracted. I mean, I could use the bigger and heavier ones that could be, but I think that's going to be good enough. So yeah, so I don't know. Well, you know what? I guess there's only one way to find out if this will work. <laughs> well, I don't know if this is Duna again. I would actually prefer Eve. We don't go to Eve very often. The tricky thing with Eve is you kind of don't want to land in the ocean. Although I guess even if we do, it won't be the worst thing that's ever happened. Um, and then we can just sort of base ourselves on the 2.5 meter parts the whole way. So we've got that. And then we use, say, this thing here plus a poodle engine. It's very efficient. Uh, we're going to need a fairing, though. Which I guess is going to be here. Now, I didn't unlock the um, the 2.5 meter fairings, and I don't think we've got the science for it. I think that was a 300. But this absolutely has to be covered by a fairing. Otherwise, we're going to lose so much of our thrust on the way up. Yeah, that's actually... We might be a little bit stuck there. We may have to go and get a little bit more science before we go. Because we need the fairing... Right here. Oh, it's only... Oh, my God. We're 0.6 science off. That's right. I'm not unlocking the 300 point ones. It's 0.6 science off. But, and we need this. So let's go and get 0.6 worth of science, you guys. We can do this. We can do this. And we're going to use a jet plane to do it. Where's my jet plane? Jitter. Oh. Apparently I haven't unlocked one of these parts in this particular version. I wonder what I didn't unlock. Does it say it? Contains locked or invalid parts. Okay, well, that's okay. Oh, I probably don't have the um, the bigger jet engine. No, nope. and also not the radial thingy. Just out of curiosity, save this. No, I still have invalid parts. It's got to be more of these airplane bits. Okay, hold on. Let's just start a new plane. Uh, don't save. Um, new airplane. It's going to look... Silly, I'm going to use this because this allows us to use this small circular intake very easily, which is going to be fine. Then we're going to go ahead. I'm going to use a big liquid tank followed by a little one. I mean, we don't even need this much. We need a microscopic amount. We, there may even be science for us to get around the KSC. That's entirely possible. So I realize this is going to look ridiculous, but that's okay. And then we put the little Juno engine on there. Excellent. Then we get ourselves some wings. Um, this is going to be the structural type wings for now. We'll make an adjustment of our um, our center of lift relatively soon. Let's get some elevons on here. These are only going to be used for roll, more or less. Um, you know what? I want this to be longer. It's going to be a little easier to design a, um, a stable plane if we do that. We're going to use these winglets. They're a little bit large. They have a lot of control authority, so I don't know. We'll do that. And that, technically, we only need these. Yeah. Um, maybe it would be better, though, if it was actually centered. Like that. This one is only meant to be used for yaw, and these over here are really only meant to be used for pitch. I mean, they can coordinate, but that's okay. So we get this thin little sort of, like, mosquito-looking thing. But that's all right. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, what are we going to get? We are going to... I don't think we need anything there. Um, I am going to sort of look at the center of mass and get ourselves a parachute here as an emergency landing measure. This will make life a little bit easier, so we're going to get that. We're going to get some little wheels here. I don't think we need retracting gear. So we'll just go and get... Oops, you are on... No, I want to grab the wheel. No, the wheel. There it is. Something like that. 
Uh, we need this a little bit closer to center of mass. Although now's a good time, now that we've got most of it down, let's check a look at the center of lift, which is fine. You want it to be uh, behind the center of mass. We could go and scooch it a little further forward. It's kind of funny that it clips in there, but this is actually going to be okay. That's going to be that. Hopefully our tail end doesn't drag. And we will get a little bit of a steerable landing gear at the front. Which is relatively level. All right, so we've got a jet engine. We've got this, we've got that. Let's throw on a little bit of science experiments here. Uh, we haven't done any of the uh, size uh, mographer stuff. Um, press mat. Too hot thermometer. And we'll put in a communitron. There we go. Right here. These are all nice and reusable. Should we try this? Sure. Jebediah. This is the mosquito. And do this. <laughs> 